We've known for a while now that the lineup of Ryzen 7000 CPUs AMD unveiled back in August wasn't the full stack and that there would be more CPUs on the way. Recently, some info surfaced on the web pertaining to these new Ryzen 7000 SKUs, indicating they might be around the corner, but some of the info is going to leave quite a lot of people displeased. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It seems like AMD will start to get busy very soon to alleviate their poor Ryzen 7000 sales. Last month, I discussed how AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs weren't selling well. This was due to various factors such as high CPU pricing, high platform costs due to the new 600 series motherboards, along with DDR5 memory, and Intel's new 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs offering better value. That sentiment hasn't really improved much over the course of a month. If we go on to Amazon and take a look at their top sellers in the CPU category, you'll find that the top 15 spots are dominated by AMD's previous gen 5000 series and Intel's 13th gen CPUs. The Ryzen 5000 series for the vast majority of users are still fantastic processors if you ask me. If you're not running a 4090 or 4080 at lower resolutions for high FPS gaming or want the best productivity performance, then the Zen 3 CPUs are fully capable of satisfying most users and they're selling for steep low prices. For AM4 gamers who do want a really fast CPU that's capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with current gen AM5 and Intel's 13th gen parts, the 5800X 3D makes the most sense. It's a drop in upgrade. You don't have to worry about changing anything in your system. Simply update the BIOS and you're good to go. If you're on something like a 2600 or even a Ryzen 5 3600, then the jumping to a 5800X 3D will give you a huge leap in performance. It's also been discounted recently where now you can find it on sale for around $330, which I think is a pretty good value. We've also got Intel offering better value with Raptor Lake since they provide more cores in those lower end segments resulting in better multi-core performance. Right now you can find a 13600K for about $300. Pair that with a B660 board, throw on some good DDR4 memory, and you've got a great budget build. It'll give you blazing fast gaming performance and way better multi-core performance than a 7600X. Now I've covered all these factors and some more in greater detail in those previous videos, so I recommend checking those out. Won't be going over all of that again. But the takeaway is that Ryzen 7000 series are not selling well due to all those various factors. What I wanted to discuss for this video was the recent rumors we got surrounding more CPUs that will be joining the Ryzen 7000 series and hopefully alleviate some of those uh, problems that AMD's been having selling some of the 7000 series. This was recently posted over at Video Cards and they're sourcing a Twitter user by the name of Chill Dog. Disclaimer is to take it obviously with a grain of salt. Now according to this user, AMD plans on launching three SKUs that will join the Ryzen 7000 series in Q1 2023. The first being the Ryzen 9 7900 Non-X with a boost of 5.4GHz and a reduction of 200MHz from the 7900X which will be launching with an MSRP of 429 That is quite a steep drop from the 7900X which launched at 549 but we'll talk about pricing in just a moment. The next SKU is the Ryzen 7 7700 with a boost of 5.3GHz which is a 100MHz reduction and will be launched at 329 The last SKU they mentioned is a Ryzen 5 7600 with a boost of up to 5.1 gigahertz that's a 200 megahertz reduction compared to the 7600x and will launch at 229 that user also did mention a couple of other important specs such as all of these non-x parts will have a tdp rating of just 65 watts and they have the same core and thread count configuration as their x variants which should be pretty obvious as the name implies what adds credence to these claims is that two other twitter leakers uh, Momomo and Tomb Apisak have posted some benchmarks from the popular Sci Software Sandra benchmarking website. One result which contained the Ryzen 7 7700 and the other which had a Ryzen 5 7600. Now if you were to ask me what I think about all this, I will tell you that I am not in the least bit surprised. I knew something like this was probably going to happen the day the original 7000 SKUs were launched. After the release of the 7000 series following the poor reception and sales AMD got, it was obvious that they were going to have their either reduced prices or that they were going to release some non excuse at lower prices. Releasing non excuse at lower prices actually makes more sense for them rather than cutting prices of parts that have only been on the market for a couple months now. One of the reasons for this is because if they were to drastically cut prices 
it did piss a lot of people off who purchased these CPUs. Cutting prices for products that are 8 or 10 months old isn't uncommon and is generally accepted. 10 months is a pretty long time in the tech world. But cutting prices for products that were only released a couple months earlier, yeah, that would feel like a kind of a slap in the face to some early adopters. The reason is that, as a company and to shareholders, it would look terrible for them to be cutting prices on products they just released. By releasing new variants of those models, slightly lowering some clock speeds, and launching them at lower price points, it allows them to save face with this technicality. At that point, they can say, well, these are new SKUs, so we're pricing them lower. Those original models, they're still available and we didn't cut prices on them. It's kind of an easy way for them to get out of that situation without really getting in trouble because they're different products. As for the pricing, these are the prices that the Ryzen 7000 series should have launched at at the beginning. But I think AMD just got greedy and we're still running on the high of the success which came from the 5000 series. And they, I guess they were just testing the market to see, you know, how much people were willing to pay for the CPUs. Their bad pricing became more apparent when Intel launched Raptor Lake because they were essentially offering Ryzen 7-like performance, if not better, at the Ryzen 5 price point with the 13600K. The same could be said about the 13700K where it rivals the 7900X but at the Ryzen 7 price point. So if we were to circle back to the pricing quoted by Chill Dog, we can see AMD will be lowering their prices to align them better against Intel's offerings. This should put AMD on parity with Intel with respect to value and multi-core performance. It's a good step in the right direction, and I'll be glad to see these CPUs come out at these price points. The next step for AMD would be to also work with motherboard manufacturers, get the prices of those 600 series boards lower, especially the B650 boards. Boards which are targeted towards the mainstream user, the masses, really shouldn't be selling north of $250. Perhaps we'll see some rebates they might offer to users, kind of like how they've been working with Micro Center, where they basically give you a free DDR5 RAM kit, what they purchase of a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 part. That is quite an aggressive move. I've now seen that they have bumped up the offer to kits which support 6000 mega transfers per second, and those kits aren't cheap, so that saves the user a huge chunk of money. Gotta give them credit where credit is due, at least they're not acting ignorant in those issues. The other thing I also wanted to talk about was the lowering of the TDP rating. At 65 watts, it seems like AMD has taken note of the criticisms from users and reviewers who are like, why in the world did you guys feel the need to push these CPUs as hard as you guys did? Many reviewers have shown that by running eco modes on these CPUs, you lose a little bit of multi-core performance, though it's nothing drastic. Gaming performance remains virtually identical, but you save quite a lot of power and your temps to go down drastically. The concern a lot of people had with the X variants was that they would be running 95C all the time. If they were to lower the TDP rating at 65 watts, then that should be basically non-existent and people will be content because they don't feel the need to drop money on a more expensive cooler. So lowering TDP is another good method for them to get some good reception of these future Ryzen 7000 SKUs. Performance wise, these CPUs should be very close to their X counterparts, essentially making them the default choice. For those that want the extra out-of-box performance, they can pay extra for the X parts, but for the vast majority of users, these non-X variants will be sufficient, plus they're still overclockable. So if you really wanted to, you can probably just tune them yourself and get that X level performance. Now moving on, and I wanted to talk about some more upcoming Ryzen 7000 SKUs, but this time pertaining to some X3D models, but a subject which I think will displease quite a lot of people. This report comes from a user called ECSM underscore official on the popular Chinese outlet Billy Billy, who state that the upcoming Ryzen 7000 X3D variants will only be limited up to 8 cores, which means there will probably only be a 7600X3D and a 7800X3D. AMD had reaffirmed a few times by now that they will be bringing their 3D cache stacking tech to Zen 4. Many people had speculated that they would introduce a full lineup of 3D CPUs mirroring their Zen 4 lineup. But that didn't seem likely to me. While the extra cache is beneficial in a lot of games, for most productivity workloads, it doesn't really help. Robert Halleck was interviewed a while back when the 5800X3D came out, and he said the reason why there was no 5900X3D or a 5950X3D is because it didn't really help much for workstation users. A lot of people who are buying CPUs like the 7900X and 7950X aren't just using their PC for gaming, but they're also using them in workstation tasks where they can put those extra cores to use. But I can see a lot of people who were holding out for a 7950X3D getting disappointed because they wanted the best of both worlds chart-topping gaming performance with chart-topping workstation performance. 
So essentially, we're going to be looking at the same strategy AMD had with the 5800X3D, but now with an inclusion of a more cost-effective 6-core model. I'm not quite sure how much of a performance uplift the 7600X3D and 7800X3D will have over their non-3D counterparts, but if we were to just speculate based on the performance uplift the 5800X3D gave over the 5800X, then we can expect a 15-20% to improvement on average, which puts AMD considerably ahead of Intel in gaming. But who knows, maybe the performance impacts a 3D cache will have on Zen 4 could be different. This is a totally different architecture, so you can't really say for sure. It could be higher or it could be lower. We're just going to have to wait until we're shown some performance numbers to get a better estimate. Pricing wise, they will come at a premium. If performance is stellar, you can be damn sure AMD will demand a hefty price tag for these CPUs. If the 7800X3D is chart topping, I could see it coming out at around $450 and the 7600X3D will probably come out at around $330. So the next few months are going to be very interesting. AMD needs to do something to bring some excitement to the Ryzen 7000 family. Right now, there just aren't that many people interested. Bringing some more cost-effective 7000 parts, as well as some 3D parts with drastically better gaming performance will appeal to a lot more people. Lowering prices of CPUs, lowering cost of motherboards, and offering some RAM bundles will also be a big help. Along with that, if you can offer significantly better gaming performance over your competition, then obviously PC gamers will flock towards your products. I hope these past couple of months have humbled AMD. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.